Gears Guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. Ah. In this Pancast, we are going to talk about Mapfer carbon steel skillets. Got a lot of community feedback about that Mapfer review I put up the other day, so we're going to go through that and answer some questions. We're going to talk about Costco. They got more deals on those Kamado Joe uh, grill smokers that we talked about last time. Uh, also going to mention some Costco wool socks, believe it or not. I want to give them a shout out for those. Going to unbox this guy. I've not opened it yet, but that should be a Lodge um, carbon steel paella pan. So I have not forgot about all the, forgotten about all the paella content we were talking about a month or two ago. Going to get into that. Uh, I got a few funny stories. Uh, one from the New York Post about cooking chicken in NyQuil and more. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is go through some of the feedback about that uh, big uh, review and cooking and seasoning feature I put up about this guy. This is a new model of the uh, Mapfer carbon steel skillets. This is a nine and a half inch model. I gave it a thumbs up. I didn't have any trouble with the seasoning. Uh, there was no coating on the pan. We had run into some trouble with seasoning or not when it came to this pan. This one did not have a coating, it was much easier to season, and I gave the pan a thumbs up. Now, I got a lot of feedback about that video. Let's jump in to some of that. Uh, Brian Green wrote in, and he said, great review, nice to see Matt for making those changes. And he wants people to know that when it comes to developing color on carbon steel, it's gonna happen a lot faster on a gas cooktop. That is true. They don't darken in quite as quickly on electric, and if you do want to darken one in a little bit sooner, I think I showed in the video, you can see your red meat at higher heat on a gas cooktop. It really kind of jump starts the cooking and color change on a pan. I will point out, however, though, you don't have to darken in a pan to cook in it nicely. It's going to produce nice nonstick results, whether it's dark or not, as long as you've got a good initial seasoning on there. Shelby E wrote in and asked, is there any way to tell if a supplier is using the updated pans or still is moving through some of that older stock? Um, the easiest way is if you can contact them directly and ask them to make sure, but if they have images on their website, images of the pans, the new ones have a slightly darker looking handle and there's a logo in the handle. That's the easiest way to tell for me. Uh, the old one here, no logo in the handle, new one has a logo. That's the easiest way to tell just by looking at them. James Goodman wrote in, and he says there's a little bit of controversy and debate going on about these new pans versus the old ones in terms of weight and thickness. So let's take a look now. I have one of the older nine and a half inch pans. Weighs in at roughly three pounds, four ounces. The new one weighs in at roughly three pounds, two ounces. So just a little bit of difference there. And I note, I measured these, I don't have the ruler right beside me right now. The old nine and a half inch pan is about a quarter inch wider than the new nine and a half inch pan. I have pretty much given up on getting accurate measurements of frying pans these days, but they're not all completely equal. Let's take a look at the 11 and seven eighths, the new one. Four pounds, 11 ounces. The old one, four pounds, 14. So it seems to be that the new ones are just a slight hair, just slightly uh, lighter than the old ones. Now in terms of thickness, uh, there's some debate over whether these are all three millimeters thick or some of them are two and a half. I really, without getting calipers, and I may do that at some point, they look to be the same thickness as the older ones. And I believe the older ones are all two and a half millimeters thick. So they seem to be the same thickness as the older ones and just a skosh lighter for whatever reason. Cork Suave, Cork Suave wrote in and is asking about that upward bow in the bottom of these pans. We showed that these pans have an upward bow, kind of helps mitigate warping issues. And he wonders 
if that means the pans are thinner in the middle where that bow is. I don't think that bow is ground out. I think these pans are made from a sheet of metal, which is kind of stamped and formed with a machine. And I think that machine puts that bow in there. I don't think these pans are any thinner in the middle, regardless of that bow. Dan Smith wrote in about that induction burner that I was using. I despise that induction burner. It's a Burton. Um, it has warped several pans. And I read somewhere that Burton has stopped making induction burners. I wonder why. They're probably tired of people calling in and complaining after the doggone thing warps their cookware. So they're not making those anymore. But Dan said, um, I mentioned in the video, I was cooking at power level two. What is that out of? I think I called this out in the video, but perhaps not. That's out of 10. So if a pan is hot and hot enough to warp at power level two on these inductions, 10 is like thermonuclear, like the surface of the sun. I, I don't like induction burners at all. I use them just because I review pans. So if I were just cooking, I would not use an induction burner, just me. Now, uh, one thing Matt for called out with these new pans, they put that bow in the bottom of the pans. They think, and it's probably true, is that induction is going to become more and more popular as some municipalities try to ban gas cooktops. I know in uh, New York, there was some discussion they were gonna ban gas cooktops for new buildings in New York City. California is thinking about banning gas cooktops. So unfortunately, induction may be the wave of the future. I hope not. I hope the rest of us will be grandfathered in at least with our um, gas stoves. You know those induction burners I mentioned, I use them to review cookware. I noticed there's one called the Control Freak. Um, I forget who sells that, it's the Control Freak, but it's about a $1,500 induction burner. Uh, I think America's Test Kitchen gave it their number one. It's expensive. They liked it. But I was looking at some other videos and I can't remember the uh, YouTube channel, but they had one and they did a flour test in there, put some flour in a um, cast iron skillet and crank that burner up. And it's the same thing I get with my cheaper Burton. You get a kind of a dark area in the middle, kind of a donut effect where the flour was really dark in the middle and had a ring of lesser cooked flour around the edge. So even the $1,500 induction burner does not seem to be perfect. So I am holding off on buying one of those. The New York Post had an article that says people are getting in trouble for cooking their chicken in NyQuil, in NyQuil. Sounds like a very dumb thing to do. Um, CDC came out or somebody came out and said, don't do that, obviously it's a dumb thing to do, but if you cook cold medicine, there can be harmful fumes getting out there and you may be concentrating it. Very dangerous thing to do. So it sounds like a really, really dumb thing to do to cook chicken in NyQuil. However, if I could get my wife to go ahead and add Pepto-Bismol to her pan sauces, might be onto something. This morning, I got up and gave my meat a dry rub. I like pig butts, and I can't deny. Got a 10-pound Boston butt here. Um, got that thing rubbed down this morning, got my fire going, and it's been on the Kamado Joe Classic 2 that I was talking about in the last video all day. So I just wrapped it right before uh, shooting this pan cast. I uh, got a couple more hours on that Boston butt and we should have some delicious barbecue for supper here in just a little while. I got that grill for about $690 or so on a manager special at Costco. I thought it was a screaming deal. My brother, he's a big time barbecue guy. He said it was a great deal. Go get one immediately. Got a buddy, went to a different Costco and found one for $590. So if you have any interest in those Kamado Joe Classic 2s, Check your local Costco. They may have a screaming deal on there. And if my wife wouldn't kill me, I might go in and buy a second one at $5.90. Sounds like a great deal. Now, normally we talk about Costco around here in terms of food and drink prices or appliances, that type thing, grills. I want to give a rare shout out to them for their socks. The snow has flown twice already here in Utah. And I went to Costco the other day for my annual pack of hiking socks which I don't do a whole lot of hiking, but they're very comfy sitting around in my easy chair inside. They now are size for foot sizes seven to 13. Thank goodness, it's been six to 12 for years and years and years. They never had bigger socks. I have a size 13 and a half foot. I could stretch those old ones and get by. Now these go up to 13. So a shout out to Costco from those of us with big old clod hoppers. 
Okay, now let's open up this box, which should contain a Lodge carbon steel paella pan. Now I reviewed that Debouye paella pan, uh, it's been a couple months ago, and I have not forgotten about the paella project. I've got a lot of paella knowledge compiled, and the Debouye pan was nice, but probably best suited for stovetop paella, as far as the size. It was a big pan in overall terms, but when it comes to paella, it was a relatively small pan. So I've been compiling all that paella knowledge and tips you guys have sent in, and I wanted to get a new pan to put some of that to use. So let's see, here it is. Woo! Wow, the Lodge Carbon Steel Paella Pan. 15 inch, pre-seasoned. Just opened it, first time I've seen it. Pretty neat looking. Definitely bigger than the Debouille. I think the Debouille was a 12 and a half inch. And this pan is kind of an older brother or cousin to this Lodge Carbon Steel that we reviewed. It's probably been well over a year ago we reviewed this one. I really do like this Lodge Carbon Steel for camping. I take this when we go on the camper trailer. And this pan seems to be a bigger version, obviously with different handles, but as far as cooking surface and thickness, a bigger version of this Carbon Steel. So I've been compiling all those paella tips and all that paella knowledge. One person sent in some stuff. He said he didn't want his name mentioned because Apparently there's some sort of secret paella society and he doesn't want the others to know that he has leaked some of the secret paella knowledge. So I'm gonna put some of that knowledge together for everyone and the next big review feature will probably be on this Lodge 15 inch pre-seasoned carbon steel paella pan. For those interested, today I am pouring a little Angel's Envy. Um, I'm new to Angel's Envy. I'd never tried it before. I tried it. It's pretty darn tasty. It does perplex me just a little bit, though. When I look at the label, the first thing that comes to my mind is the question, where is the apostrophe? Does it need an apostrophe? Something to ponder as you enjoy your beverage. That about wraps her up for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.